Here's one more video that uses arrow in and two lines for ampersand. It's got a number of boxes in it. Um, I'll try to do this as fast as possible so it doesn't get boring. Well, we start at the top and do everything we can. We see that 1 has an ampersand for its main connective, so let's break it up. It's 1 ampersand out done twice. Line 2, we don't have T and Z, so we can't do arrow out. Line 3, we don't have E and Z, so we can't do arrow out. Okay, that means we're stuck at the top. Stuck at the top, we go to the bottom, and we see that it's an arrow. The main connective at the, in the conclusion tells you exactly what to do, so we're going to do a box for arrow in. This would be a pretty good-sized box here. Boy, didn't I draw that line nice and straight? I'm very proud of myself. It's not easy drawing straight in this program. Using a tablet. Here we go. Come on. Oh, that's not straight at all. And, oh, <laughs> I wasn't. What happened there? Okay, now I'm drawing. There we go. And the top of the box, of course, if the arrow's the main connective, everything in front of it is P, and that's what goes to the top. P to the top. Q to the bottom. I can drop these parentheses at the bottom because they would be around everything and that wouldn't be helpful. Okay, so the, every box begins with a provisional assumption. It's a, just a fancy way of saying let's pretend that this is true. And of course it's a PA for the rule arrow in. Okay, so when you make the box then you go back up to the top and you look for things to do. I've already worked on one. I could check that off. Do I have T and Z yet? No, I don't. Do I have E and Z? Nope. Still uninteresting. Ah, but then when I get to line 6, it says if I have S, I can write T. Well, I do have S, so I can write T. That would be 4, 6, arrow out. And I can check off 6. Well, quick scan, anything else? If I had T and Z, aha, T and Z have both shown up. So on line 8, I can I am inspired by 2 to write T and Z. That would be 5, 7 ampersand in. And having done that, I've set up the arrow out so that on 9, I can get I. And that, of course, is 2, 8 arrow out. I can check off 2. Was there anything else I can do? If I had E and Z, I could write N and M. Yeah, I don't see an E and a Z. I see a Z. 4 and 5, still uninteresting. 7, uninteresting. 8, I built that. Don't need to break it up. And then I, uninteresting. Alright, so now it seems like I'm stuck again at the top. And of course I shouldn't be surprised to get stuck at the top at this point because we're learning the top-down rules and strategies. Since I'm stuck at the top, I go to the bottom. This is the line we care about. We recognize that it has an ampersand as its main connective. The main connective tells us what to do. We're clearly doing two lines for ampersand. Now, this instance of two lines for ampersand is going to happen inside of another process. But that doesn't change what we're going to do at all. All we're going to do is right here, in the middle, we write the first part. I. And then down at the bottom, we write the other part. E, arrow, M. We've left space to prove both of them. And so now let's prove them. However, notice this is one of these cases where one of the things that I've written in already exists. So there's really no reason to prove this again. In fact, it would be silly. I should just get out my eraser and say, well, I don't need that. I don't. When I need the I, I'll just use it on line 9. All I really need to prove is E or O M. So, let's make a box above E or O M. And this is going to be a very spacious box here. But let's make a box above E arrow M to prove E arrow M. E at the top 
M at the bottom. Provisional assumption for arrow in. And now all we have to do is prove M. Notice there's nothing that's off limits up above me because all I'm doing is going deeper and deeper inside of a box. M is my current goal. So I go up to the top and I look, is there anything I haven't worked on? If I've been checking off lines, it should be obvious that 3 is where my attention should go. If I had E and Z, then I could write M and M, N and M. Well, there's a Z, ah, and there's an E. So now we get to put them together. E ampersand Z by 5, 10 ampersand in, 5 comma 10 ampersand in. We know why we did that, so we can do the arrow out and get N ampersand M, 311 arrow out. And at this point, we are pretty much done. All I need to do is the ampersand out to get the M. Here's one of these cases where you don't really have to take both parts and put them on separate lines. I'm going to go ahead and do it because there's no reason not to. But this line 13N is really completely extraneous. I only really need the M on 14. But success! The inner box now shows that if you gave me E, I could get to M. Thus, I have proved if E then M. 10 through 14, and the name of the rule, arrow in. Now 16. Ah, this was an ampersand. I need to have the two halves on separate lines. I already had the I on 9. I proved the E arrow M. So 9 comma 15 ampersand in. And then the justification for 17? Well, it'll be 6 through 16. And the name of the rule, arrow in. And we're done. Well, I hope you found this to be a pretty easy proof. Enjoy the studying.